So most of the time, Asian fighters are not people that people talk much about because a lot of the fights happen in Asia, so that's why. So this uh, fighter, Pong Salak, Wong Young Kam, he <laughs> probably you would never have heard about him, all right? But he has had a pretty remarkable career. Again, the level of opposition not necessarily top tier. He's in the lower weight divisions as well, so that doesn't work in his favor. Nonetheless, let's talk about his career, which is pretty outstanding, all right? So, of course, he began boxing in 1994, and he faced a number of different people. He won the WBC World Flyweight title from a guy called Malcolm Tunakao, okay? And this was all, it took place in Thailand, all right? And because it takes place in Thailand, you probably wouldn't know about it. Then beat some Japanese boxers, and then most of them were Thai boxers, okay? Nonetheless, the point is he held that World Flyweight title a pretty long time. I think you're talking about six fights he defended it. And then he, uh, oh, sorry, my bad, not six fights at all. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Wow. Ooh. I reckon it was 16 times, man. He defended it 16 times. I guess various uh, Asian guys. And then he lost to a guy called Dazuki Naito. Okay, and I was in Japan. He tries to get it back from Dezuki Naito in the fight to split draw. He wins the interim title against Julio Cesar Miranda, which is obviously a, uh, a Mexican fighter. And he maintains that for a bit, and then he is able to win it from Ko Koki Kamida. Everybody knows Koki Kamida, right? That was in 2010. He is able to win back the title from Koki Kamida, and he goes on to defend it successfully. He even beats Edgar Sosa. Everybody knows Edgar Sosa. This is in 2011. This is so many years after the fact that he won the title. Uh, he loses to a guy called Sonny Boy Jero. I guess that's some sort of Asian fighter. He loses to him. Yeah, he knocks him down Ooh, four times. <laughs> All right, he comes back. He's working his way to get try and get a title. And he loses to a guy called Ray Magrino. Moves up to super bantamweight, and he has oh, he won a fight in super bantamweight. Five years after leaving the sport, he came back and won a super bantamweight fight. So I'm not too sure if his career is over as yet. He may be still persistent in boxing. This guy is remarkable, though. Again, not a lot of high caliber, well known, well recognized names on his resume. But the thing about it is that he, he's able to beat one or two really well-recognized world champions. And he was a long-reigning champion, as you can clearly see it, at um, flyweight. And then he moves up to, I think it was super flyweight or bantamweight, I can't remember. And he was a southpaw fighter. So I just thought that this guy should get some, some recognition for what he's done. Again, he's not as strong, the, the competition was not as strong, say, as the competition you would find with other fighters at higher weight classes but nonetheless the dude had some longevity and again kind of throwback fighter he got like 98 fights that's like ridiculous right <laughs> so you know those kinds of things also are are beautiful to see and this guy's been around he's like a fossil again he's been around since 1994 you know so he's been around in the boxing game for a good while and he's 41 years of age now almost 42 okay so it's just something that you know you have to you have to factor those things in the longevity of the sport the regularity of, of fighting, even though it may not be the highest caliber, you know, we were just talking about in, in, in about two videos ago, how, you know, people talk about, they talk about throwback fighters. Well, here's a throwback fighter, but not, he gets no recognition, right? And all the purists and all these people, they bypass him. You know what I'm saying? So this is why I said is the, 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 the sport of boxing, the, the so-called purists, the so-called historians, they're hypocritical. Because when guys actually are doing what throwback fighters did, they're not getting the recognition because they don't have as much world-recognized and high-caliber opposition as some other fighters do. So that's why I said it's not about the numbers, the sheer numbers of fighters or the sheer numbers of fights. We could do that. Today, guys could do that easily in their sleep. You know what I'm saying? But what we look at 
and Roger Mayweather said it, and a whole bunch of other people said it, is really who you fought and who you beat. It's the caliber of opposition. I used to say the quality of opposition. I used to say the, the level of opposition. It's all the same thing. And so, you know, if he had done some unifications, it would show that he fought guys on his tier. When you become world champion, you just don't want to fight contenders, 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 contenders. In, in a world where we have multiple titles and multiple sanctioning bodies and multiple belts, right? You want to fight guys on your level, which means you have, if you're a world champion, you don't just want to be fighting contenders because, and there are other world champions out there. You want to fight other world champions. If the, if the world was even where there was just one belt, then you would have to look at the contenders, right? And, and, and the top tier contenders in your division and how they beat other people. But in this case, when you have other world champions there, that says, okay, we are all on the same level. Then I need to fight other world champions. You know what I mean? So that's why I said it's a different era of boxing. And some of these, these, these old fogies and these people who talk and stuff, and no disrespect to, to some of these people. Some of these people, they built a reputation in boxing and stuff. But I'm tired of people who just follow them blindly. They don't think, and it's like the Bible of truth because these people are telling you something. And a lot of times people respect persons and they don't respect information. They respect who's telling you the information and not what they're telling you. And then nobody's criti critically analyzing anything. And it, it, I bemoan that fact because I'm nobody in the sport of boxing, but I can see these things, right? And I'm tired of the bullshit. So that's why I, say I keep on doing these videos over and over again. And for those of you who see my videos, share the videos with other people, man. Anyway, I hope you guys have a great day. Have a good one.